Hi, I'm Shannon, one of the librarians here from Naperville Public Library, and tonight we're here for A Night with Robert Burns. So welcome to A Night with Robert Burns. In this program we will learn all about Scotland's most famed poet, as well as the traditional Scottish meal, the Burns Supper, that is served in honor of his birthday on January 25th. So Robert Burns, also referred to familiarly as Rabbi or Robbie Burns, was born in 1759 in Alloway, Scotland, the son of a tenant farmer. Like his father, Burns also became a farmer and later in life was an excise collector or local tax collector, but he was also a poet throughout his life as well as a lyricist. Burns was viewed in the literary world as a prodigy due to his undistinguished background, rural upbringing, and theoretical lack of education. An early review of his work in 1786 by leading Edinburgh critic Henry Mackenzie coined the phrase, the heaven-taught plowman, and Burns leaned into this simultaneously lofty yet humble role. In reality, he was well-read and had had a private tutor to educate him, so the idea of the simple bard unbroke by rules of art, to quote one of his poems, is not truly applicable. Burns is often referred to as a pre-romantic poet due to his focus on aspects such as emotion, nature, and individuality. These would be elements that would become important to later poets of the Romantic era, such as Lord Byron and Percy Shelley. Robert Burns's most famous works include Auld Lang Syne, which is sung around the world at New Year's Eve and other events of parting, To a Mouse, which addresses a mouse whose home he upsets with his plow. A man's a man for all that, which addresses the concept that a man's worth cannot be measured by his wealth or class. A fond kiss, written upon the parting with one of his paramours, Agnes McLehose, a.k.a. Clarinda. Uh, Scott Swahey, a song about the historical Scottish figure Robert the Bruce addressing his troops at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, and Tam O'Shanter, a narrative poem based on a folk legend about an inebriated man who encounters a group of witches. Rather like Shakespeare, some of Burns's work is strewn with less than family-friendly content. A BBC Scotland documentary called Inside the Mind of Robert Burns, which featured some of his lesser-known works and intended to portray, quote, Robert Burns as a human being rather than a symbol of Scottishness or masculinity or radicalism, came with a viewer warning due to the inclusion of vulgar language. Among other works, Green Grow the Rashes includes body lyrics, and The Merry Muses of Caledonia, a collection of poems and songs, was deemed, quote, not for maidens, ministers, or striplings. As to Burns being a symbol of Scottishness, Burns is viewed as the bard of Scotland even today. He had actually planned to move to Jamaica, but when his poetry collection, Poems Chiefly in the Scottish Dialect, was published in 1786 and began to sell in earnest, he moved instead to Edinburgh. As famous as he became, he did not forget his roots. His love of farming remained throughout his life, and his writing often dealt with issues of the poorer classes and need for social equity. He favored the idea of reform during the French Revolution. In addition to his works as a poet, Burns was also an accomplished lyricist, contributing over 100 songs to a book called The Melodies of Scotland. The most famous of his songs are My Love is Like a Red Red Rose and Auld Lang Syne, where he added new lyrics to a traditional Scottish tune. To learn more about the history and legacy of Auld Lang Syne, watch my program A Cup of Kindness Yet, The History of Auld Lang Syne, on Naperville Public Library's YouTube page. Burns dedicated hundreds of lines of verse to women. He was married to Jean Armour, with whom he had nine children, but he fathered three other children as well. His final child was born during his funeral when Burns died of rheumatic fever at age 37 in 1796. One of Burns's notable affairs was with Mary Campbell, known as Highland Mary for her strong accent, when he and his wife Jean Armour were on the outs and she left him to move to Paisley. 
It is speculated that Burns and Mary may have exchanged vows, uh, they did trade Bibles, and he suggests in verse that they moved to Jamaica together. But Mary Campbell died after a brief illness at the age of 23, not long after meeting Burns. So while the relationship may have made a great impression on him, it would likely not have been long lived. He dedicated the works, The Highland Lassie O, Highland Mary, and To Mary in Heaven to her. Though he had long since passed away by the time World War I began, Burns still served as an important figure during this time. Posters urging enlistment invoked his words and likeness, saying, What Burns said in 1782 holds good in 1915. Oh, why the deuce should I repine and be an ill foreboder? I'm 23 and 5 feet 9. I'll go and be a soldier. Take his tip. Also, during the Christmas truce of 1914, British and German soldiers left their trenches and sang Burns' song Auld Lang Syne together as they swapped food and gifts. The versatility of Burns' messages in his works means that people and groups of various mindsets have been attracted to him over time. Despite Burns being used as a figure to stir enlistment, some of his writing has a, quote, make love not war sentiment, so pacifists during World War I latched onto this. For example, the poem Logan Braes addresses human loss due to conflict. Post-World War I, the Communist Party in India was interested in him as a proletarian writer, standing up for the common man. Still others focus on Burns as a radical in poems such as Scots What Hay. But even there, this piece can be seen as a patriotic Scottish work as well as a tribute to the working class. And don't forget his works embracing humor, romance, and folklore. This range expresses Burns' scope as a writer and also explains his broad and enduring appeal. Burns is considered Scotland's national poet and was voted the greatest Scot by viewers of Scottish TV in 2009, beating out William Wallace, Sir Alexander Fleming, and Robert the Bruce. Statues of him can be found throughout Scotland and beyond, including Canada, Australia, and in the United States. In the U.S., look for him in Boston, Pittsburgh, Denver, Milwaukee, New York, and Chicago. Burns' birthday, January 25th, is celebrated in Scotland and by Scottish societies and literary groups around the world. This holiday is known as Burns Night, Robert Burns Day, or Rabbi Burns Day, and it is traditional to have a Burns Supper to honor the poet. The first Burns Supper was held in July 1801 when nine close friends of Robert Burns gathered to mark the fifth anniversary of his death at Burns Cottage in Alloway. That supper included a traditional Scottish meal, performances of Burns' works, and a speech in honor of him, now known as the Immortal Memory. Nowadays, Burns' suppers are held on Burns' birthday, January 25th. A bagpiper greets the guests, who are then seated, and the Selkirk Grace, a prayer said before a meal attributed to Robert Burns, is said. Uh, the meal then starts with a soup, such as potato soup, kakaliki soup, uh, chicken and leek soup, or cullen skink, which is a hearty soup of smoked haddock. The haggis is the central dish, and haggis is a traditional Scottish dish composed of sheep's stomach stuffed with its chopped organs, including lungs, heart, and liver, plus oatmeal, spices, and onion, and boiled in a bag. It is particularly appropriate to serve haggis at a Burns supper since he wrote a poem about it called Address to a Haggis, dubbing it Great Chieftain of the Puddin' Race. Uh, remember that many puddings in Burns' day were steamed or boiled, uh, not like our modern custard-like interpretation of a pudding. A whiskey toast to the haggis follows its reveal. Other dishes include neeps and tatties, um, mashed turnips and potatoes, uh, desserts such as a tipsy laird, and many toasts, uh, the immortal memory to Burns, an address to the lassies and reply to the laddies, uh, followed by readings of Burns' works and a singing of Auld Lang Syne. And here are some resources on Robert Burns that you can find at the library. We have the complete works of Robert Burns, containing his poems, songs, and correspondence with a new life of the poet and notices critical and biographical. 
Um, the Bard, Robert Burns, A Biography by Robert Crawford. Robbie Burns, Witch Hunter. Uh, this one is rather fun. It's a graphic novel that's kind of based on Tam O'Shanter. And uh, The Writer's Garden, How Gardens Inspired Our Best Loved Authors. This includes many different authors, uh, but including Robert Burns's. And then um, The History of Scotland, Castles and Clans um, has some information about Burns as well as uh, Scotland, if you're interested. And then you can listen to recordings of Auld Lang Syne and My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose through Hoopla's eMusic function, as well as on various CDs in our collection uh, by different artists. And thank you for watching. Hope you've learned something about uh, Scotland's favorite poet. Uh, hope we will see you again soon at the library, and bye-bye for now.